welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. The stagecoach fire destroys a third home as firefighters work overnight trying to get the upper hand. The latest on their progress coming up. We're learning that the way kids will be learning this year is going to look very different. And that has many parents putting off back to school shopping because, well, they don't know what to buy. We'll tell you the kinds of supplies educators say will help them learn from home. And as the search for survivors continues in Beirut this morning, we're learning more about what could have caused the devastating explosion. Today is Thursday, August 6, 2020. Good morning, Kern County, and thanks so much for starting your day with 17 News at Sunrise. I'm Alex Fisher along with Maddie Jansen, and uh, it is Thursday, everyone. It is also known as Friday Junior. Looking forward to the weekend, especially with these cooler temperatures. The cooler temperatures are nice, but let me tell you, up in the mountains, what brought those around yesterday were the winds. Uh, so that is an issue because we're seeing these wildfires right now. So let's check in with Kevin and see what, what we're looking at for our Thursday. Well, this trough is in place and that's definitely bringing us to cooler weather and we did see the breeze pick up yesterday. I think it'll, they'll be a little lighter today um, and yesterday we were below 100 again, but today we are looking at some very nice temperatures and we're at 65 degrees right now. Uh, we've got a north wind at seven miles per hour as we take a look at the uh, hour by hour forecast our dog walk forecast. You can see uh, 71 degrees uh, by 8 a.m. and then we'll be uh, right near 90 throughout the afternoon. But I think for the most part, many areas will be in the upper 80s. To hatch be at 55, a northwest wind at 5 right now. As we take a look at the hour by hour forecast here, it is 50s to start and then 70s throughout the afternoon. I'll have much more in your forecast coming up. All right, thanks so much, Kev. Well, we start this morning with the latest on the stagecoach fire. Kern County Fire says the stagecoach fire is 10% contained this morning. It's grown to more than 4,200 acres. Three homes have been destroyed by the flames, and about 250 other structures are still threatened. Kern County Fire tells us if they keep up this same pace, the fire should be under control by August 17th. Now there's some dramatic video of yet another home being swallowed up by the stagecoach fire. Take a look at this. This is home surveillance video shared with us by Robert Higgins, who says his vacation cabin in Caliente went up in flames around 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. You can see the fire started surrounding the porch before the camera goes dark. We spoke with Higgins from his home in Los Angeles, where he watched helplessly as his cabin was destroyed. The video speaks for itself. It's all of us were sitting there watching it just with our my kids and my wife and man, we're just our jaws are on the floor we're like oh my gosh i can't believe this is happening higgins says his family bought the cabin seven years ago because they love the area and the people who live there the central california animal disaster team activated up in tehachapi to help families affected by the fire the volunteers set up at the tehachapi education center on monday the Red Cross helped house several families, and most of them were able to bring their pets with them to their hotel rooms. But the team was able to shelter one family's two large dogs. The team is now in standby mode in case more evacuations are ordered to give families a little peace of mind in a time of crisis. Kern County Animal Services was also on standby at the Tehachapi Rodeo Grounds for anyone with large animals. To get the latest from us, be sure to follow our pages on social media and you can download the 17 News app and we'll send alerts straight to your phone regarding the Stagecoach Fire. Meantime, the Stagecoach Fire was not the only blaze that broke out. Yesterday afternoon, the Johnson Fire burned 36 acres before firefighters were able to put a stop to it. It started around 3.30 on the hillside near Highway 202, just outside of Tehachapi. One outbuilding was burned, but no homes were destroyed, although flames came very close to two homes. At one point, Highway 202 had to be closed. It has since reopened. Firefighters stayed on scene overnight to watch for any hot spots. Your time now is 5.04, and we bring you an update this morning on a story that we brought you yesterday morning. BPD is searching for a man they believe is linked to the shooting deaths of two men. Here's a look at where it all happened Tuesday night on 10th and M Streets. BPD says two men were shot and found in the street. One of those men died at the scene. The other was taken to Kern Medical.
where he died a few hours later. It's not clear what led up to the shooting, but now BPD has identified a suspect. Take a look at his picture. This is a picture of Eric Laval Nichols. A warrant is out for his arrest in connection to this double homicide. If you have any information about where Nichols might be, call BPD. And police located the body of a man they believe went into the canal at Mill Creek and ne never came out. This happened Monday at Mill Creek near 17th Street. BPD says the man got into the water and did not come out. Crews searched for him, but were not able to find him. Crews say they received or retrieved a body from the canal that matches the description of the man. He has not been identified. The investigation is still ongoing. Meantime, the search continues for a missing man this morning. Here's a picture of 27 year old Michael Glennon. Police say he has a medical condition and hasn't been seen since Friday. His last known location was Beach Street between Chester Lane and Dracena. If you see him or know where he is, call police at 327-7111. And the sheriff's office is asking for help in the case of another missing man. KCSO says 31 year old Jasmine Marks hasn't been seen since July 23rd. He was last seen near 20th and Elm Streets, a few blocks away from Beach Park. If you see Marks or know where he is, call KCSO at 861-3110. Welcome back. This week, state officials announced the system used to report cases of coronavirus is having technical issues. That directly affects how many new cases are reported to county health departments. Kern Public Health confirmed the problem affects their coronavirus case count as well. This means the new cases reported recently are likely an undercount. Although there's a delay in uh, Kern Public Health says the data glitch and delay has a direct impact on controlling COVID-19 because it takes longer to identify who was recently infected, which affects the county's ability to conduct contact tracing. The delay will also affect the reported case rate and the positivity rate since the numbers will be skewed. But this does not affect the number of hospitalizations or the death toll. Kern Public Health says there are different systems they use to report that information. Although there's a delay in reporting, Public Health confirmed 205 new cases and one more death yesterday. We've now had more than 21,000 positive cases since March. About three quarters of those are considered active right now. More than 15,000 residents are recovering at home. 248 people are in the hospital and receiving treatment for the virus. 152 people have died since the beginning of this pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic is hurting Americans' health, including some who haven't even contracted the virus. Cases of stress, cardiomyopathy, also known as broken heart syndrome, are on the rise. An increase health experts attribute to the emotional and physical stress of the past few months. Sarah Dolliff has the story. Uh, blessed to be here. But Waves of stress began sweeping over Rick Watkins this spring. The pandemic, furloughs at work, a sick grandchild. I felt I was good at internalizing things. Didn't turn out to be the case. Then his father passed away. The morning of the funeral. Then I had some ringing in my ears and my arms started to go numb. And uh, I guess I just uh, sat back in the chair and that was it. I was out. It wasn't a heart attack, but stress cardiomyopathy, also known as broken heart syndrome. It occurs when one part of the heart stops pumping normally. The heart becomes very weak. Um, it's similar to having a heart attack, only uh, the coronary arteries aren't the reason. Um, this is your body's response to profound stress. Interventional cardiologist Dr. Grant Reed is the senior author on a recently published study that finds the rate of Cleveland Clinic patients with stress cardiomyopathy went from an average of less than 2% during the last two years to nearly 8% in March and April, the start of the pandemic. People need to take a special effort to take care of themselves. This isn't going to be a sprint. It's going to be more like a marathon. And we need to be very mindful of all of the different effects that the COVID pandemic is going to, is going to have on our health. Symptoms are similar to a heart attack, chest pain, and shortness of breath. With immediate treatment, most patients recover, like Rick Watkins, who spent eight days in the hospital, four in a medically induced coma. I feel really, really uh, blessed to be here, but I feel great. Proof of the toll stress can take on anyone, anytime, but especially at the height of a global health emergency. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. A local father is pleading for the community to take coronavirus seriously after his teenage son ended up in the hospital. 
Centennial High student Adam Black and his family says they took all of the precautions they could to keep from catching the virus. On June 17th, Adam woke up with no taste and later tested positive for COVID-19. He spent 14 days in quarantine with no symptoms. Then, two weeks later, woke up to illness. On that 28th day, he woke, went to bed pretty, pretty okay. Woke up uh, on that 28th day and had a ton of issues. Um, fever of 103, um, chills, sweaty, uh, blurry vision, uh, very nauseous um, and very weak and very tired. Adam was admitted to a Bakersfield hospital and transferred to Valley Children's in Madera. Adam has been diagnosed with Miss C. It happens when the antibodies in his system made to fight COVID-19 went on to attack his heart. His doctors say this isn't uncommon for children and teens fighting COVID-19. And doctors also warn people about the severity of the virus, saying the infection does not discriminate. We're happy to report that Adam was released from the hospital Tuesday and is recovering at home. A GoFundMe account has been set up to help his family with medical expenses. You can find the link on our website, kgetu.com. And if you've recently recovered from COVID-19, Houchin Community Blood Bank wants to hear from you. We can't say this enough. People who have had the virus develop antibodies, which can be transferred to other patients through donated blood and possibly help them recover faster. Houchin says out of the more than 6,000 people who have recovered from the virus, 200, donated, 200 of them have donated so far. And they see about 15 to 20 donors each day. If saving a life isn't enough to get you in the door, the blood bank is also offering survivors a $50 gift card simply to donate. That promotion has been extended again to August 15th. For more information on how you can donate, call 616-2575 or visit the website hcbb.com. Even if you haven't recently had COVID-19, blood donations are still uh, in high need right now in our community because a lot of donations and drives have been canceled due to the pandemic. A deal is shaping up in Washington to renew unemployment benefits and keep people from being evicted. Tracy Potts is in Washington to explain. As we await new weekly jobless claims this morning expected to top 1.4 million, a plan is taking shape on Capitol Hill to restore federal unemployment payments. I feel optimistic uh, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but how long that tunnel is remains to be seen. The plan, $400 a week down from 600 and a ban on evictions till the end of the year. $10 billion for the Postal Service to help with mail ballots, but nothing so far on money for schools, state and local governments, or food. By Friday, if we haven't made significant progress uh, and we're just too far apart, the president is prepared to take an executive action. There's frustration on both sides. We are not walking away. If we can't come up with a good deal, then unfortunately we have to walk. Republicans worried about the price tag. It's all borrowed money. We are a long way apart, and uh, we'll see. President Trump stirring up controversy. We want our schools open. It's going away now. It'll go away. With false claims. You look at children. Ch that children are, quote, almost immune from coronavirus. Facebook pulled his post. Twitter pulled a similar post from his campaign. The coronavirus infection rate is down 11 percent, but the actual number of deaths and cases continue to grow. Tracy Potts, NBC News. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.